Hey, how you doing guys? My name is Lewis with Fedivo. Today, I am just doing some portraits of a violist. And I was thinking, over the last 10 years, the number of tools from photography, which have now become interchangeable with videography, is off the charts from carrying accessories to tripods, even the cameras themselves. However, one tool which has remained largely a photography only tool is the strobe light, which is what a flashlight which I'm using to illuminate the model. Now, outside of uh, a narrative short film where you've got someone taking uh, photos and having a flash going off in the background, there's going to be very little need to ever use this for a video or a continuous shooting. However, as photographers and videographers jobs have also become interchangeable it's not uncommon if you're a photographer to have a video request perhaps the violist would also like to do an interview segment now there are a number of higher end strobe lights that come with a modeling lamp which is an additional led built in to the strobe unit itself built for the purpose of pre-visual pre-visualizing and modeling the subject instead of firing off a dozen flashes blind in the model is that you simply use the modeling light in order to find out where exactly that light's going to fall off and what it's going to look like before you start setting up your flashes now that brings me to the idea of a light bulb going off in my head of do i really now need to invest into one of these a continuous filmmaking light when i already have continuous light with my photography flashes? That's the question that we're gonna to explore today. And in fact, I'm gonna give you a spoiler straight away. Uh, it is not a good idea. And these are the reasons as to why. Before we jump into the first one, remember to subscribe and like, it does really help the channel. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is our setup. Uh, we've got some lights over in the background, kind of like a documentary 60 minutes wave sort of vibe. Got some musical uh, props to the right. Um, and it looks okay, but it's definitely too dark within this area. And this is where we would inherently use a key light in order to illuminate the subject's face. Don't worry about the position of the lamp at the moment. That's not what we're gonna be looking at. But one of the first issues we're gonna talk about is the functionality of using a strobe light as a continuous light in a video setting. So if I just turn this on, I'm not too sure if the lavalier is gonna be able to pick it up. However, what I do have here is a decibel meter. And we're looking at round about 60 dBs. For a medium, which inherently usually requires a lot of silence, that is just way too loud. Of course, the fans are used to cool the unit and prevent overheating. However, that you will find that with continuous filmmaking lights, they have been specifically designed with less audible fans and heat sinks in order to prevent the need for such loud fans in the first place. With a strobe light, well, there isn't a need to be quiet as having reduced noise isn't that important on a photography set. If we compare the FJ400 and the Aperture 120D, which is a dedicated LED continuous light, we can really hear the difference in sound. The Aperture 120D ranges from 43 to 50 dB and our app tells us this is the type of noise that you would find in a library. Whereas the strobe light has a fan noise of 62 to 70 dB and our app says this is the equivalent to office conversation. As filmmakers, we make it a mission to seek out this type of noise on location and squash it. So the idea of introducing a light that creates this type of noise is a big no-no. Okay, so as previously noted, uh, this light is currently way too close to the talent um, and it also needs to be modified so it's not a brutal hard light. So let's just move it over a touch. Okay, so I'm just going to extend this out over here. So we have a nice softer key light. And then add this attachment to diffuse the light and bring it up. Okay, so I'm going to bump this up to full power. Now, one thing as well, I guess, to think about is the uh, way in which you operate the power um, on 
this isn't as intuitive as a film light where you wanna be able to go from the maximum to the minimum uh, within a beat. There is a very awkward dial, but again, it's not expecting you to kind of be operating it like this. So <clears throat> as we can see by here, uh, it's given like a fair amount of uh, illumination at its max power. And we've definitely lifted the shadows out from uh, our talent's face. And this is what, if I actually get my tape measure, six feet exactly away from us and it's doing a fairly decent job if that light was any further or if we need to increase the brightness i think we might be at odds with our current predicament and likewise if we just inherently needed more light because this area was too dim uh, we do have the open daylight windows by there it wouldn't be that great okay so this is the model in lamp and max power six feet and a few inches away Let's turn this off. Now we're going to turn on the aperture with a standard lantern attached to it. Again, six feet and a few inches away. Now this light is comparable to the uh, modeling lamp from the strobe, but there is one big difference with the power output. So the modeling lamp has a 20 watt power draw. The aperture 120D has a 135 watt power draw. This is at level 33 out of 100 and we can see that the brightness is comparable. Now if I was to increase this, it gets to the point where we're only at 70% and the power is completely washed out our subject. If we continue to push it, it becomes overbearing for our scene. Again, these are two completely different tools and I know as a filmmaker who has used a lot of low budget and guerrilla techniques, you're always looking for a way to save money. You're always looking for a way not to have to acquire another bit of gear. But there is a vast difference in the way that these lights operate. This is a continuous filmmaking light used for these situations. The modeling lamp, it's there for pre-visualization. Now there is one more caveat to the modeling lamp. Okay, so let's finally talk about the attachments. The one thing that both of these lights have in common is that they are a hard light in their natural state and they will need to be softened when photographing or filming a subject. So we would look at using one of the many attachments available. However, photography accessories are usually designed a little bit different. And that's because they are designed for still photography, which involves capturing a single moment with a large bright flash that can overpower any drawbacks in the construction. With filmmaking, as the sequence is typically anywhere from 10 seconds to several minutes long, we need the lighting to be consistent throughout the entire process, which can be challenging to achieve with photography accessories. For example, with the rapid box attachment, the device's construction has the umbrella tongs meeting in the middle, which then leaves a projected shape on the softbox material and then onto the subject itself. And this is common across the wide variety of photographic lighting modifiers on the market. In contrast with filmmaking lighting modifiers, you will often find that they have been designed to minimize lighting obstructions to create a perfectly even spread of light onto the diffusion material and onto the subject. All right, guys, I've been Lewis with Fedivo. Make sure you subscribe and like, it really helps the channel grow. And unfortunately, we're not walking away with a set of new skills or tips and tricks today, but with just, with just some facts. Uh, and the fact is, is that using the modeling lamp feature on a strobe light as some continuous light for prolonged periods of time just isn't ideal, nor is it safe. Uh, so if you are a photographer and you have been approached to do some uh, shooting uh, for, um, an interview or perhaps a music gig or whatever it may be you are ideally going to want to upgrade to a continuous light and there are so many budget options on the market uh, it's not as if you're going to be left out of pocket well that's all from me today and i'll catch you guys next time